Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you holding this hearing, and I thank the witnesses uh, for appearing before us. Today's hearing is entitled, From Timber to Tungsten, How the Exploitation of Natural Resources Funds Rogue Organizations and Regimes. As our witnesses will undoubtedly explain today, timber and tungsten are just two examples of the many valuable natural resources that have the potential to be exploited. Other examples include oil, coal, rare earth elements, and countless other natural resources that have commercial applications. These resources can be a source of pride and prosperity for the nations and communities that hold them. However, the resources are increasingly make it, making it into the hands of bad actors, rogue regimes, terrorist organizations, or organized crime syndicates, and used to finance terror and other illegal activities. In a 2021 report, the Financial Action Task Force estimated that illicit extraction or harvesting of resources like oil, timber, metals, and minerals generated between $110 billion and $281 billion per year. Environmental crime typically occurs in regions with robust stores of valuable natural resources, but without stable governments that can provide security or enforce existing laws. This, in turn, perpetuates the struggles for the people in these parts of the world. The enrichment of bad actors through resource exploitation requires vast and sophisticated networks of shell companies, intermediaries, and money laundering operations. <clears throat> and, in some cases, direct collaboration and coordination with corrupt government leaders. The U.S. and other nations have dedicated resources to combating money laundering and countering terrorist financing. But today's hearing will inform us where the gaps remain, what more we can do, and the possible long-term strategic consequences of illicit resource extraction by our adversaries. The Chinese Communist Party has made no secret of its intent to grow its sphere of influence, monitor its citizens and others around the globe, and control the means of production and telecommunications to gain leverage globally. This is evident in the context of our hearing today. One example is China's relationship with the Democratic Republic of Congo, where China had trapped the DRC with massive debt through its Belt and Road Initiative and was able to leverage that vulnerability to gain control over the DRC's cobalt reserves. Nowhere is the threat of malign Chinese influence more evident than in Afghanistan. In the near term, we must focus on bringing to safety Americans and Afghan allies still trapped in Afghanistan, fighting to survive the brutal Taliban regime. Once we have accomplished that goal, we must turn our attention to the long-term strategic implications of our withdrawal from Afghanistan, and specifically through the lens of competition with China as, the, as they seek to usurp the U.S. as the preeminent global economic superpower. This hearing will allow us to examine this problem through one specific lens, how the Taliban and other terror groups, the Chinese and non-state actors can take advantage of the vast resources available in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has some of the most valuable stores of rare earth elements in the world, including many that play an important role in emerging technologies and are becoming increasingly scarce. In 2010, the U.S. conducted a geological survey of, Afghan of Afghanistan to identify natural resources present in the country. Afghanistan is believed to hold more than $1 trillion worth of mineral resources. The survey identified stores of gold, copper, tin, and rare earth elements needed in the production of advanced batteries. Those resources were largely untapped because of the precarious security situation in the country. Given the shift in power in Afghanistan, the Taliban, potentially through collaboration with the Chinese who met with Taliban leaders in Doha just last week, may be able to harvest these elements and control the supply of scarce resources needed to fuel growth in the United States and other advanced economies, including key elements needed for electric vehicles such as lithium and neodymium. The, this, the administration's haste uh, uh, to fully abandon gasoline-powered vehicles and choke off energy production to fuel those vehicles make us less reliant on domestic energy and subjects us to the will of adversaries, whom we will increasingly rely on to provide us with the materials we need to live in our daily lives. And this could be one example of where the climate goals of this administration directly conflict with our national security needs. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses today on this important topic. The problem of illicit natural resource extraction and environmental crime financing bad actors is widespread complex and has potential long-term implications on U.S. national security. The insights on the problem and advice for specific solutions we hear today will help guide our policymaking. Thank you, and I yield back.